Hello and welcome to Jackson's Job. Today you will learn how to make chocolatey chocolate cupcakes that use cheap chocolate but taste absolutely decadent. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get those wonderful chocolate cupcakes and I think you will really enjoy this recipe. This is a very simple cupcake to make and it doesn't need a lot of expensive ingredients so I think you will appreciate it. Let's get to baking. You will need a muffin tin. If it isn't non-stick, you'll want to line it with paper liners or grease and flour each tin. I do recommend using paper liners as they always look prettier and they are easier to share, store, and clean up. Then please preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius. In a small bowl, we're going to mix our dry ingredients. I'm going to use a third of a cup of cocoa powder, 27 grams. Next, you want to use one cup of sugar, that's 200 grams, and to that you're going to add in your flour, a cup of flour, 150 grams. I'm not sifting my flour ahead of time, that's why it's 150 grams. Then we're going to use a half a teaspoon of baking soda, that's 3 grams, and a quarter teaspoon of salt, 1.25 grams. If you don't have baking soda, use one teaspoon or four grams of baking powder. Then you want to mix this until it's well combined and you don't see any lumps. If you have a sifter, this would be a good time to use it. Next, we're going to move on to our wet ingredients. In a large bowl, we have three quarters of a cup of buttermilk, that's 180 milliliters, and a third of a cup of oil, that's 80 milliliters. To that, you're going to add a half a teaspoon of vanilla, 2.5 milliliters, and two large eggs, 100 grams. There are buttermilk substitutes, and I will give you a link below on how to make it. However, whenever possible, you want to use buttermilk because the tang of the buttermilk really brings out the flavor of chocolate beautifully, and it also lightens that texture quite a bit, and it just makes these a very decadent cupcake. Beat all the wet ingredients until they're well combined, and then add that cocoa flour mixture from earlier. And then you're gonna mix it until you no longer see any lumps. Divide the batter equally among each tin. You want them about halfway full, no more than two thirds full. If you fill it up too full, you'll get that real big dome shape, which may be okay for you, but it's harder to decorate. You wanna then bake these 18 to 22 minutes or toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean. Let them cool in the pan for five to 10 minutes and then remove them to a wire rack to finish cooling. Now we are going to make a frosting. We're going to use a quarter cup of softened butter, that's 56 grams, and to that we're going to add a pinch of salt, 0.5 grams. Blend it on low until it's nice and smooth, and then we're going to add in a quarter cup of vegetable shortening, that's 48 grams. If you don't want to use vegetable shortening, you can use all butter. If you don't want to use butter, you can use all shortening. However, I do recommend using both because it gives a nice flavor and texture to the frosting. Then you're going to add in some powdered sugar. You need two cups or 250 grams. I recommend you put it in a spoonful at a time. That way you get a really nice smooth texture to your buttercream. After you have beaten in all the powdered sugar, you're going to add in one to two tablespoons of milk, 15 to 30 milliliters, to get a thinner consistency. If you're happy with the consistency you have, leave the milk out. Now we're going to add in some cocoa powder two tablespoons or 10 grams. Now at the very end, after you have it all mixed in, give it a quick taste. If you want it more chocolatey, add in some more cocoa powder. Start out with a teaspoon and go up. Then we're just gonna put this into a piping bag so that we can pipe it. If you don't have a piping bag, use the back of a spoon or butter knife and just smear it on top and it will still taste absolutely delicious. I like to use the 1M Wilton tip. It gives a nice swirl and it makes it look all fancy. For most people. Now, I tend to have problems decorating cupcakes, so we'll see if these turn out okay. And they're doing pretty good. Now, if you use a too big of a bag like I'm doing here, you have to use a lot of pressure. So I do recommend going with a smaller bag when you're first starting out. Eight inches is absolutely great. That's about 20 centimeters. Let's open one of these up. If you have noticed, I am opening up a completely different cupcake. And that's because I had made a ton of these cupcakes and I forgot to film the end. So I made a quick new batch, but I used dark chocolate this time so you could see the difference. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Thank you for watching, and as always, happy baking.